you. At Big Data SV 2014 is brought to you by headline sponsors WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. And Actian, accelerating Big Data 2.0. Hey, welcome back. We're here live in Silicon Valley for Big Data SV. This is Silicon Angle and Wikibon's The Cube, our program we go, where we go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. I'm joined by my co-host Jeff Kelly from Wikibon.org. We have Lenny Blucher, VP of Engineering at Jiwire. Uh, welcome to The Cube. Thank you. So, uh, VP of Engineering, you must be geeking out on all the big data stuff going on here. Uh, you know, it's half geeks, half business infiltrating the show. Um, and Dave, and Dave Vellante and I and Jeff always talk about the evolution of the tech, you know, technology, the algorithms, the platforms, into the business side. So you see, and big data has attracted all kinds of, of folks here. Um, so I got to get your perspective. What do you, what's your take of the show here around the, the tech, the engineering, uh, for someone who's building products, whether it's a startup or for businesses? Uh, what are they paying attention to? What are some of the conversations you're hearing? Well, one of the things that uh, I think is different this year is uh, the fact that almost everybody is a data scientist or data wrangler. It's a little different from last time where Strata was focused um, a lot on uh, scale, like how do you handle larger volumes, how do you handle big data, how do you uh, uh, make this data available for uh, enabling business decisions. This year is, is pretty much all about generating insights, generating business intelligence, which is exactly what I'm here for, because ultimately, Jaiwire is in this business. Uh, what is the Jaiwire business? Tell me a little bit about the business. So Jaiwire is a 10-year-old company. Uh, we're focusing on uh, providing business intelligence to brands and agencies, and um, basically giving them ways to reach the right audience and measure, measure the results. Uh, we started out as a uh, uh, sort of ad network over uh, Wi-Fi, um, which gave us uh, a very interesting uh, ability to kind of understand that location plays a really big role in uh, targeting, which became particularly relevant when the um, industry started shifting from laptops more into mobile devices, uh, smartphones and tablets. Once we started seeing that shift, we really invested in uh, uh, figuring out how location can be used to create the right audience. Um, about two years ago, we created a product called uh, Location Graph. It's basically similar to how Facebook has a social graph where they figure out who you are by people you're connected to and things you like. In our world, we figure out who people are or create custom audience segments by the history of their location. Okay. It's very different from geofencing, which was kind of early location targeting technology. Uh, location Graph allows you to really understand and look into big data, which is the history of locations, billions and billions of location tags, and figure out what the patterns are. And once you uh, cross-reference it with other data points and mm. third-party data, it really explodes as far as what mm -hmm. kind of profiles you can build and what kind of audience you can create for the brands. So Lenny, I mean, I'm sure the, when people talk about the Internet of Things, when these, you know, the early, early folks who were just learning about that trend, that's not new to you. I mean, you know, you connected devices and, and information that you have to use through that machine data is really valuable. Um, so kind of how, how do you, when you talk to people about the Internet of Things and the big data opportunity around the analyst, what have you learned from your business on how to, how to handle these connected devices? The, the interesting thing, uh, uh, the biggest learning is actually very trivial, is that data is not, doesn't equal information. You, in, the, in the world of big data, which is a trivialized term these days, you do have uh, your three Vs, you know, velocity, variety, and volume. And the challenge is really how do you infer information, actionable information, uh, monetizable information. And in our case, it really becomes also a question of uh, business intelligence that we uh, uh, convey to, to our clients, um, help them understand what their audience is, how to reach it, how to measure the effectiveness of the campaign. So talk a little bit about some of the, you know, under the hood. Um, you know, you've been around for 10 years, so you've seen uh, this kind of evolution of big data, as, we, as it's called, but um, you know, you've seen this from the start, really, um, being in this, in this business. How is that kind of, um, how is your tech approach to technology to support the type of analytics and the types of insights you're trying to deliver to your customers? How has that evolved, and how have you kind of um, 
uh, evolved your own internal uh, operations to kind of really take advantage of this shift, as you mentioned, from laptops to mobile, the explosion of data, right. now you've got unstructured data, you've got all sorts of, of new types of data sources to take into consideration. Um, walk us through a little bit some of the, the, the evolution of um, you know, your internal work and some workings and some of the challenges you guys have faced as the data volumes and variety has grown. Sure. Um, so the first challenge we had was uh, uh, actual ability to handle the volume that is coming at us as we integrate with uh, various supply sources such as um, ad exchanges or RTB platforms. You've got to be able to respond to ad request within you know, 30 to 50 milliseconds. Otherwise, you, you basically lose business. So first thing we have to do is invest in our platform just to be able to handle the traffic that we want to be able to support. Second thing for us was to understand how to deal with all the data we collect. So you get this fire hose of, uh, of ad requests and signals that we want to track. And uh, for us, uh, the challenge was really be able to uh, figure out insights from this data quickly. So you know, we started with Hadoop as your typical uh, ETL process to uh, cleanse the data, reshape it in the shapes that you want it. Early on, we kind of realized that uh, uh, technologies like Hive mm -hmm. are pretty slow for, mm -hmm. at a time, a couple of years ago at least, uh, were pretty slow and inefficient when it comes to the question of enabling your business users to, to draw the data conclusion or for targeting. So we, uh, uh, we started experimenting with a lot of technologies. We kind of got into a columnar database, which really allowed us to just handle the data uh, on the back end. Uh, however, the, the first vendor we selected uh, uh, had a lot of problems as far as operational support, you know, database uptime, crashing, multi-tenancy, things like that. Eventually, we uh, uh, went with uh, Action and Paracel, which kind of uh, uh, solved a lot of issues for us as far as uh, just stable operations, uh, ability to handle volume, and, and we were able actually to develop quite a few big data products that we monetized and turned into like, products that resonate with the market. What are we, yeah, can you share a couple of examples of some of those products and, and, and how those are delivering value to your clients? Sure. So the first thing was location graph, like I mentioned. Yep. We patented that technology. Uh, the, uh, uh, in essence, what it is is um, analyzing a um, uh, huge amount of ad requests, billions of billions of ad requests and data points, correlating it with uh, quite a few different parameters, dozens and dozens of parameters, like locations of businesses and proximity to businesses, times of day. Um, and quite a few other things, uh, uh, maybe census data and, and a few other data partners that we integrated with. So we're able to create dozens and dozens of uh, custom audience segments that we can then go to brands and agencies and help them reach this audience. But it doesn't stop there. Uh, we realized early on that in addition to targeting, we also have to come up with or invest into measurement. And measurement really means pre-campaign ability to sort of understand what audience at what scale you can reach and help your client structure the campaign in the right way. And then during the campaign execution, ability to look at dynamics of how your campaign is executing, whether you're reaching the right people, mm -hmm. ability to turn on and off different yeah. knobs, and then when campaign is finished, to really showcase the client how did it do. Uh, in this area, we actually uh, finished last year with uh, uh, another revolutionary product called Location Conversion Index, which is really the first product um, in the mobile um, advertising that allows ad agencies and brands measure the effectiveness of their campaign, ROI, basically. The, in the simple terms, the idea is they, they spend a certain amount of money running this mobile campaign. How much traffic did it really generate into their mm -hmm. store? We're able to create this using our new data analytics platform and really defend the results one-to-one -one matching to a specific device IDs at scale. So that's that's kind of uh, how we were able to evolve in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, well, so you know, technology you mentioned earlier was Hadoop, and you know, of course, here at Strata, that got a lot of attention um, over the years here at the show. Um, but we're increasingly moving to real time. And you know, we're seeing in the Hadoop market, we're seeing different players trying to add some of those real-time capabilities. But then there's, of course, other technologies that you can layer on top and around Hadoop. Um, mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how you look at the, the, kind of the evolution of the of, of these big data technologies and how you approach kind of integrating both the and the role of both the kind of the batch historical analytics that you might do in something like Hadoop with the real time, where you've got to, you've got to deliver an offer or you've got to deliver an ad to somebody. And I think as you said, in milliseconds or less. So how do you kind of uh, look at those two? Are they, it sounds like they're certainly complementary, um, but imagine you need a integrated architecture that actually allows you to, to connect those dots. 
So we've done a few things to address this problem, but I feel like we're still at the tip of the iceberg, and certainly based on what I've seen in the Strata conference this year, uh, this is the new topic of the day. How do you basically eliminate ETL and mm. you know, deal with your data where it is, which is Hadoop? And that includes both um, um, be able to like, tap into real-time results and uh, draw insights right there so you don't spend time you know, moving terabytes of data across all your different systems. So we're going to st start evolving into this uh, new way of doing things, and that's basically a, part of, a big part of our roadmap. Um, but in our case, uh, we, we also have to do uh, with real-time targeting. Uh, like I mentioned, we have to make a lot of targeting decisions within 50 milliseconds, and that means the uh, uh, ability to, learn, to basically uh, draw a lot of uh, conclusions out of real data that we see mm -hmm. coming with, with every ad request and, and different signals that we get. So uh, we already built a lot of sort of in-memory solutions and, and uh, a lot of interesting platform optimizations where we can basically deploy a lot of um, uh, uh, custom audience segments in near real time. Real time is always tough, but near real time yep. uh, is kind of where you want to focus. Mm -hmm. for your Talk about the areas of high uh, performance analytics and, and what, are, what are some of the things that, that you guys focus in on and, and to deliver that? And what should some of your peers and other folks that are looking at generating you know, high performance analytics be thinking about in terms of deploying and engineering those solutions? So an interesting trend that, that has emerged over the last couple of years uh, and its trend is basically as old as the term data scientist, which is about two, three years old, is that when it comes to working with big data, you, you basically have two kind of conflicting, um, uh, not necessarily completing, but competing uh, aspects. First of all, you want to explore the data. Second of all, you want to report on it. So this, this um, two uh, competing uh, aspects uh, have different uh, requirements and different SLA. Um, you know, with, with the proliferation of data science and data, data wranglers, they want to be able to do a lot of ad hoc data analysis, sometimes in a very large data set, which can literally take, take down your system. So you got to be able to figure out how you can expose your big data to these two different um, um, aspects or, or use cases. Uh, fortunately, it's something that uh, we were able to accomplish with Paracel platform, which allowed us, and the site license that we get allowed us to deploy the limit, you know, virtual and limited number of, of servers for both uh, sort of data exploration cluster and the tools and analytics cluster. Talk about that technology a little bit. Um, Paracel is, the, is the, the technology that is um, kind of the Redshift uh, service that AWS offers, getting right. a lot of attention at AWS. Uh, Paracel now part of uh, Actian. Talk a little bit about some of the technology characteristics of Parkcell that make it, uh, they give it that performance uh, capabilities right. that, you know, kind of, by all accounts, one of the top in the industry. No, so interesting you mentioned uh, Redshift because that's how we started basically with Parkcell okay. because um, uh, it was easy for us to get our hands dirty and sort of understand the value proposition of this particular platform. It was literally uh, up and running within, within weeks uh, uh, with uh, uh, business reports uh, uh, interfacing the business users. Um, then we, we did a proof of concept with Paracel and uh, a couple things that kind of uh, um, were apparent to us. First of all, ability to ingest data into it, load data, uh, was orders of magnitude easier and simpler than what we had to deal with before. And that solved for us for a lot of problems right there. Then um, uh, Paracel, um, and this is what different from Redshift, Paracel allows you to, to create um, a UDFs, user-defined functions. And in our case, uh, where we have to do a lot of uh, distance calculations and proximity calculations, this is highly uh, expensive compute um, um, operation. With Paracel, we're able to basically uh, uh, make it functional in our size of data. Um, and then um, it, it's really robust. You know, it's just the system stays up and we can really enable multi-use, multi-tenant type um, use cases. Lenny, I want to ask you, we've got time, time check here, we're on, we're on our next guest here, but I want to ask you about Acting and you guys are, they're, you, you use those guys, they're a customer of yours. Um, you're a customer of theirs, I should say. Um, we had them on theCUBE, they had this really nice platform they put together. What should folks know about Acting out there that, uh, in your experience with them and, and the success that you had with them? Um, 
Well, a couple of things. I think uh, with, with the acquisition of Paracel, we we're a little uh, uh, curious how that's going to work out, whether action is going to continue involving or investing in this platform. And uh, b based on what I've seen, they turn out to be a really good partner for us. Um, you know, from support, addressing issues as they come, to uh, product trials and, and sort of working with us to share their roadmap with our needs and help us plan ahead uh, how we want to evolve our data systems, uh, it, it's working. So they're a good partner. Yeah, we've been very impressed with the folks we've talked to and, and we've talked to the board members and some of the executives there. And I tell you, they're putting all the right pieces together, Jeff. And I tell you, in this market, it's all about the business value and that's the theme here. I agree, scale, I mean, Hadoop's here to stay. Now it's all about the data science, the data wrangling, the, as uh, Jeff Hammerback would say, you know, the data, you know, the gym rat for data. You know, it's like people who want, like to work out with data, that's the data geeks and that's where the innovation is. And I think ultimately simplicity will be, will be the end game here. So a lot of great stuff happening here at Big Data SV. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the advanced extracted signal from the noise strata conference ending today. Uh, the Cube will be going 24 seven uh, from this point forward. Our last day here on site in Silicon Valley, uh, our office in Palo Alto and in Massachusetts will continue the coverage. We'll be right back with our next guest. We have an entrepreneur and we have uh, more content for the rest of the day. We'll be going wall to wall. Uh, and, and thanks so much for watching. Stay with us.